Hi kids. My name is Douglas Meredith, and I am the author of a chapter book series called Generation Mars, which is all about the first kids growing up on Mars. The Generation Mars series is what grown-ups call hard science fiction. Hard doesn't mean difficult in this case. It means that science plays a central role to the story. It means that everything that happens is realistic and possible rather than magical. The idea that there will be kids growing up on Mars in the future is not fantasy, but it's pretty fantastic if you ask me. Their life stories will be very different than yours in many ways, but I think they will also be more similar than you expect. Today I'm going to start reading the first book of the series. It's called Scratching the Surface. Let's get started. Generation Mars, Prelude, Scratching the Surface. Chapter One. By most measures, they lived lives normal for children their age. They played often. They fought some. Too much for their parents' taste, but no more than normal sisters. They went to school. They watched TV and played video games. Cass liked to skateboard, Ori liked to dance. However, the sky they looked up at when ambling about their town was not real, for their town was underground. When Ori danced ballet, her sautés were a meter off the ground. When Cass rode her skateboard, she could ollie over chairs. Cass and Ori were Martians. They were not green. They had no antenna on their heads. They were perfectly normal human girls who happened to live on Mars. Chapter two. In a classroom full of the first children born on Mars, Cass was the first of all. When she was born, she was the only baby for a hundred million miles around. Every baby is special to its parents. Cass was special to everyone on two planets. Mars, still an alien world, occupied by a small population of immigrants, was suddenly the home world of a new human being. One Martian year later, which is almost two Earth years, Ori was born. In between, many other new little people had come to call Mars home, and all of them now shared the classroom with the two sisters. Chapter 3 their school combined first through third grades into one class, so the sisters shared the same classroom. In that room, there were tables and chairs, but no assigned seats. The children worked wherever they wanted throughout the day, often spreading out on the floor or working together in groups. Ori liked working in a group. In shelving around the walls were all sorts of learning materials and books. Here and there were nooks where a child could sit on their own with a book or a project or just to think. Cass spent much of her time in these. On the walls were maps of both Mars and Earth. The books they read told stories of Earth. Most of the materials they worked with came from Earth. Being in the first school on Mars meant you learned a lot about Earth. Their teachers, Sally and Nina, worked hard to develop lesson plans that focused on the needs of young Martians. But, to be honest, nobody knew what those needs would be. Being in the first school on Mars meant you were an experiment. Chapter 4 For lunch, the children ate at tables in the forest an area of the town that was planted with many varieties of green things that breathed in old air and released new. There was a wide path around the forest for walking and jogging, and many trails through it for exploring, and benches here and there for sitting. Above it all was the painted blue sky. After lunch was playtime. There was a park in the forest that gave them room to run. The park had things for them to climb on, and if they fell, they cried just like children anywhere, though they fell more slowly and were rarely hurt. 
Chapter 5 Children, said Sally to the kids sitting in a circle around her, settling down after playtime, I have a surprise for all of you. Next week, we will all get to see the surface. The kids ooed and cooed. Third grade will have their first E.H. outing, while first and second grades will be able to watch from the OBS dome. E.H. meant extra habitational. Cass would be walking on the surface. This would be the first time any of the children saw the surface. The colonists had built underground, using existing caves and lava tubes where possible, building and burying structures where necessary. This was to protect themselves from solar and cosmic radiation. On Earth, the atmosphere and magnetic field serve this purpose, but Mars has little of either, so dirt and rock filled the role. The forest was actually the largest cavern, preserved as common space to, for exercise and relaxation. To help themselves feel more at home, the colonists painted the ceilings of their common areas like the skies of Earth. They had even developed lighting that changed throughout the day to create the feeling of living sunrise to sunset. Chapter 6 The week passed quickly. Excitement and anticipation for the walk grew each day as the children studied and prepared. At dinner the evening before the big day, the talk was all about the surface. We tried on the new suits in class, said Cass. Mine has a blue bird on the helmet. Sally says it will grow with me and should fit for a couple years. She showed us how to lock the helmets and how to use the readouts in the visor. They're projected right on the visor. She said someone will be monitoring them, but that we should develop the habit of checking them ourselves. She said the weather tomorrow is supposed to be mostly clear with only a little dust in the air. She said she's going to show us all around the colony. Do you think we'll see the moons? Cass paused for breath. She made the mmm sound she always made when the words wanted to come out faster than her mouth could make them. Then she started in again. I really want to see a rover. Dad, when do you think I'll get to ride in one? Ori was excited as well. She was excited for Cass, but she was also excited because she would get to see the surface too. The OBS dome was new and the kids had never been there before. She did not know what to expect, but she was excited nonetheless. She wanted to be part of the conversation, too, but could not get a word in. Cass was talking so much and so fast. Her mother noticed this, and finally, when Cass was taking a breath and saying, mm, turned to Ori and said, What about you, Ori? How do you feel about getting to see the surface? Ori smiled, but then realized she didn't know what she wanted to say. I'm really excited, too, she said. Chapter 7 As she crawled into bed, Cass found that her mood had changed. She was still excited, but she was also nervous. There was a fluttery feeling in her stomach that she didn't recognize. Dad, she asked as he was tucking in her covers, why are we getting to go to the surface now? I thought it was dangerous. Her parents looked at each other, waiting to see who would respond. Well, all the parents discussed it and we decided that it's time, he said. The threat of radiation was real and applied to all the colonists. The threat to children was assumed to be greater. But the actual level of risk was unknown for the simple reason that there had never before been a human child growing up in an environment like Mars. This is your world, added her mother, more so even than it is ours. We can't keep you from it forever. It's time for you to begin taking part in it all. Cass thought about this. I'm a little scared, she said. Her dad sat down on the bed next to her. He stroked her hair gently. Don't be, he said. You'll be perfectly safe. Your suit is the latest design. Solar activity is low. Sally knows what she's doing. You'll be fine. But none of these things were what she was scared of. She didn't know what she was scared of, but none of these were it. Then, as she drifted off to sleep, 
Cass realized that her feeling wasn't really fear, at least not fear of physical harm. She was nervous because something big in her life was changing, and she wasn't sure she was ready. Realizing this did not, did not make her fear go away, but it caused another feeling to settle in right next to it. Determination. We're going to pause there for the day, and I'll read the rest of the book tomorrow.